Brian here with Prudential Pest Solutions, and we have another yellow jacket nest inside of a ceiling, and this one was in Birdsboro, Pennsylvania, um, which is in southeastern Pennsylvania. And what, what the client saw was yellow jackets coming and going out of the soffit area right next to their chimney. And their first inclination was just to, to maybe spray and then seal up the, the gap where the soffit is, but... Where this nest actually was, was at least a foot and a half, almost two feet away from where they were entering. So no amount of spraying on the outside, even with my professional commercial grade chemicals, would have ever reached the nest. And what they started to see develop on their ceiling was they started to see some wet spots. And he thought, well, you know, maybe it wasn't coincidental that there was some wet spots, some buzzing or some humming above the ceiling and the fact that they had yellow jackets on the outside. Now, what made this job extra special and extra kind of cool is that um, this client and I actually went to high school together and we haven't seen each other since and it's been almost 20 years so he saw some of our videos on Facebook and some of our social media and reached out and of course I was happy to obviously happy to help but uh, it was good catching up with him um, shout out to Kyle and uh, so Kyle and I went to high school together I uh, actually grew up in the same small town in southeastern Pennsylvania which is Moton Pennsylvania and uh and then we played football together too so it was it was kind of good catching up with him uh he's doing well uh family's doing well so it was uh it was great for us to be able to help them out and and kind of catch up too with some of this nostalgia of the neighborhood and growing up so you can see we throw our tarp down there because uh as we all know that uh, when we start ripping this nest out um all the the larva is pretty gooey and slimy and and moist so we don't want to hit their nice carpet or their nice flooring there and I'm just gently probing into the ceiling with my drywall cutter. And where they had built this, right, right where those, uh, where that line of probing was, there's a there's a seam right there in the drywall. So I was trying to decide, hey, do I want to go to the left or right of that? And uh, there was actually a, a ceiling joist right there, so you know we had to go the other direction, which is right where the nest was anyway. There was more soft spots there, so. You know, just like some of the other videos, I inject that PTPI with my applicator right into the opening there that the wasps are, the yellow jackets had already created. Now, what, sometimes one of the challenges when you inject directly into that opening there is that that, that nest is, uh, it will be directly above that. So you might only be able to inject half inch or a quarter of an inch into that opening. So what's really important is I try to get sideways, like put the nozzle in and then go, you know, try to bend it a little bit so it really permeates into that ceiling void because that's what we really want. We want that chemical to permeate that void to really start killing off the nest before we start opening it up more. Because what I'd really like, ideally, is with the PTPI chemical that we use, it is it permeates that void, it kills them quick, but I want them to die and fall directly onto my tarp there. And not only does that make my life easier when it comes to cleanup time, but also you don't want a bunch of yellow jackets flying around the room, even though I'll vacuum and I'll remove and kill them. Um, all it takes is one yellow jacket to accidentally land on a pillow or get into a pillowcase and uh, you're going to have a client <laughs> not too thrilled with you that night. So, um, you know, we're just going to give it a couple more seconds here. What's dropping out of there are the dead yellow jacket. So uh, the chemical is obviously working and we're just making sure that it's landing on the tarp and it is. And once the noise starts to die down a little bit, I, I'll, I'll start probing a little bit more into the drywall here. Now, in this case, the drywall was... There were some wet spots, but there wasn't a big section of wet spots. So we actually had to had to you know use this the teeth of the saw to really cut the a small section out. And again, we don't need to cut a big four foot by four foot section. We just need to get, you know, maybe six inches, four to six inches on each side just to just to get access, remove the damaged drywall, and then get the nest out of there. And if you've seen any of our other yellow jackets and walls or yellow jackets and ceiling videos, you'll know that when the yellow jackets make their nest on the insulation, uh, in between the insulation and the drywall, they tend to really eat at the drywall and really whittle it away. And, and, and oftentimes it's just the paint that's holding it together. So where that drywall is supposed to be, you know, a half inch thick, it'll be, it'll be paper thin, which is why it's so easy for me to poke and prod in there, but also why it's, so easy for the yellow jackets themselves to break in and get into the get into the house. So 
So our other goal as we're opening up this wall void here is we want to make as small as opening as possible so that it doesn't require as much damage, but we also want to make the into a square or rectangle to make whoever has to eventually patch this area up, make their job a little bit easier. We don't want to make just a big jagged, uh, gross looking hole. We want to try to make, uh, make it look pretty, make whoever has to repair this job a little bit easier too. All right, so now the nest is exposed. And you can see how that how the comb of that nest with all the larvae in it is sitting directly on top of that insulation, which again, if you were just to stick your applicator nozzle directly into it, uh, you might not actually reach all the nests, which is why now that it's open, I'm gonna poke and prod kind of sideways uh, and inject because uh, I, wanna, I want to really fill that whole void up with the PTPI. Now remember, I like PTPI because it, it works very quickly. Uh, which is important when you're in an enclosed area with stinging insects, but also there's no residual chemical to it. So um, if there's maybe some chemical hesitancies, uh, if, if the client is a little hesitant about using chemical, I should say, uh, it's a great product because it, 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 it's effective, it's fast, but yet there's no long lasting effects to it. Now, in this case, after we remove the nest, we're going to apply a longer term residual dust to that void. Um, that we, that is uh, that's called tempo dust. So, you can see here we're just we're just opening up a little bit more, trying to make the edges a little bit straighter uh, and making it a little bit nicer. Oh, and there was a yellow jacket landing on our camera there. So there were some yellow jackets that were flying around the room a little bit, but where where they're going to congregate to? Um, they're going to congregate to that lamp that's on right next to the bed there, and then also there was a window right to my right. Um, so if they're not already dead, they're going to flock right to those light sources, thinking that it's a way out. All right. So we got the drywall all opened up and this is what it looks like directly looking up. So we can see the, the ceiling joist to the right, the nest in the middle there. And of course I always take pictures so the client can see what it looked like in there in their in their ceiling there nice little memento of their yellow jacket ordeal so now i'm using my painting my painters uh, multi-tool here to kind of pry and prod and get the nest out now I, I try to get the nest out as one big chunk um for two reasons one it looks pretty and it looks sweet for pictures uh, which again we provide to the client as a little memento but two the the larva if you start breaking that nest apart I mean, it'll get gooey and nasty all over your hands, but more importantly, all over the ceiling, the floor, the bed. We don't want to get any, you know, we, we want to make as little mess as possible. So it's important that we try to get the comb out in intact pieces. It just cuts down on the mess and the cleanup time. We can see a little piece of insulation hanging down here. So um, what that looked like above there was there was insulation with a, a fiberglass batted insulation with a paper backing. And their nest was built directly onto the paper. So, um, you know, if we're looking from inside the room up, it's drywall, the nest, the paper backing of the insulation, and then the fiberglass insulation. And because this area here looking, if we were to look, you know, straight out to that wall there, that's the exterior wall. That's where the chimney is. So again, in the beginning, I said that the yellow jackets were coming into the soffit area where the chimney meets the, the side of the house there. They weren't in the chimney, but they were in that void. And uh, when I looked into that, once we got the nesting out and the insulation out, I was able to see in there. And it's quite an extensive little void in there. So, again, any amount of spraying that was done on the outside, whether it was with Raid or some over-the-counter chemical or even my commercial-grade products, would never have permeated all the way into the nest here. So that's why, even though the drywall was damaged, it's important that we treat directly into that nest. Which kind of reminds me of another another theory too that if the drywall isn't damaged, um, you don't actually have to to try to find the nest, what you or, or to actually remove it. I should say. I mean, you should, but if if you don't want to damage your house, uh, if there's not already damage present, what you can do or what we do is we use a stethoscope to locate where the nest is, and then we'll make a tiny little hole with a drill, something that you know just some spackle could easily fix, and then we inject directly into the nest that way. So that's just an alternative if the drywall is not already damaged. But in this case, it was super soft. You could put your finger right through it. 
it had to be repaired anyway. So if it has to be repaired anyway, let's just open it up a little bit, get the nest out, get it treated, and uh, and get them good to go. So now I'm just making sure that, that all the dead bugs or all the dead yellow jackets are out of there, all the nesting is out of there, all the paper backing um, from the nest is out of there. I'm just going to grab my super bright flashlight just to just to make sure everything's out before we uh, we tape it shut. And that's looking straight towards the chimney uh, inside there. And you can't really see with the GoPro because it's mounted on my helmet, but you know there's a pretty extensive void there. So, um, you know, I'll probably fog it a little bit more with that PTPI just to make sure everything's dead. And then we can go ahead and put that long-term residual dust, which is Tempo dust made by Bayer, and then we'll tape it up. Now, if you're going to reach into a void after you've already removed the nest, I would definitely recommend using gloves like I have, which uh, go beyond the wrist. Because uh, if your gloves only come to your wrist as you're digging around in there, some yellow jackets are still not dead yet. They love to kind of, I'll tell you, they love to find the one exposed part. So they'll uh, maybe sometimes have a tendency to get inside of your glove and and uh, get you right on the right on the wrist. And that's not fun. So I use I use thick welding gloves that can't sting through it, and more importantly, they get beyond my uh, my wrist so that I can really reach in there, make sure everything's cleaned out and good to go. So now that that long-term dust is in there, I have my tape, and we're just going to tape it up here just until the homeowner gets this repaired. And uh, and Kyle was telling me that he had a guy come in on Saturday, which is uh, you know four or five days later, which I think is a perfect time frame. Uh, to have that that permanently fixed there, permanently replaced. So one thing I don't show in these videos is after we're done taping this up and we got everything cleaned up and all the yellow jackets removed and vacuumed is uh, I usually go on the outside and we do a kind of a base spray just where the, in that soffit area. And what that does is it kills off any other yellow jackets or wasps that are in that area. But also the yellow jackets that were out of the nest already, as they come back, you know, of course, if they make it in through the soffit, they're going to come across that long-term dust I put in there and it's going to kill them. But um, this will kind of, that, that spray will help uh, kind of prevent them from even coming in and creates kind of a chemical barrier. So we're just taping it off, finishing up. And then my preferred method is to just kind of ball everything up into my tarp, take it outside, throw it away. My uh, when I, I always have trash bags with me. We never leave anything for the homeowner. And then I have a Milwaukee battery powered uh, backpack vacuum that I use, which has a HEPA filter. And I go through and we get all the, maybe the drywall dust, the debris, and obviously all the dead uh, yellow jackets and nesting material that, um, that didn't make it to the tarp. Uh, we'll vacuum all that up so that when we leave, there's absolutely nothing that the homeowner needs to do to clean up other than just call a drywall professional to come in and, uh, and, and patch it up there. Now, another common question we get is, you know, after we remove a nest like this, homeowners will often ask me, well, what can we do to prevent this from happening again? And you know, one of my common answers, especially since they were coming in through the soffit, is, you know, we could come out in May or June because this is this is happening. September first is when this uh, when this treatment took place. August, September, October is when these nests and the numbers uh, are so great that um, that it becomes really a problem for homeowners. Is that we can come in, in in May or June and do a treatment on the outside, kill off the the few yellow jackets that are there before the nest gets to this gets to this level. And we're all taped up there, so nothing can get through. And we see a couple stragglers on the window. Like I said, they like to congregate where the light sources are. Um, so again, this was from a high school friend, uh, Kyle, in Birdsboro, Pennsylvania. And we're really appreciative that he called us out there. We are the Yellow Jacket Hornet Bee and Wasp experts. So give Prudential Pest Solutions a call or text us at 484-401-4361.